Hello and welcome to another submarine chat. This one is going to be about underrated submarines. Five submarines that in my view ought to be much better known. Not talking about submarines that are just obscure or just particularly interesting, but ones that should be more important in the history of submarines than I think they get attention or credit for. I am H.I. Sutton. I'm a defense analyst. Normally ride and talk about submarines and unconventional naval warfare. In most recent videos I've been doing mostly about current affairs, but I want to get back to the core topic of historic submarines as well. Bit of that. So usual caveats, this is unscripted, unedited. Let's get on with it. So the first submarine started at the beginning. The history of submarines normally starts with the Holland class. I think that this is a little bit biased, let's say, or, or skewed. It's largely because the Royal Navy and the U.S. Navy both started their modern submarine journey with the Holland class. The Holland class does deserve the attention it gets, but there's a submarine that's underrated or overlooked, and that is the Narvel. This was built around the same time, actually launched a tiny bit a year earlier, maybe. But it's a French submarine, and it introduced some concepts that still um, are still in submarines today. I don't think it's actually as good as the Holland class in some respects, but certainly deserves much more credit than it gets. It was designed by a chap called Alfred Nebel. Saying that badly, no apologies. It's interesting. Some certain things seem strange today. Steam engines, the torpedoes were literally externally carried and things like this. But what it introduced was the double hull concept. That is to say that there's an inner hull where the humans are... are uh, contained and then there is an outer hull which is flooded and that's where the ballast tanks and, and fuel tanks and things like that are this form of construction is different from what holland did that would be single hull i've got videos on the difference between single and double hull but this was the first of the double hull submarines and for example u1 the very first german u-boat built a few years later use double hull structure, very much influenced by the valve. And in fact, I think pretty much almost all countries that build submarines have at some point built both single and double hull submarines. Even today, the most famous submarine ever probably, and in arguably the greatest in many respects, the Typhoon class, I think Hunt for Red October, that sort of thing. That's just uh, left service like a couple of years ago, but Submarines such as the Type 212 CD continue the double hull um, into the future. Second submarine, still chronological. In World War I, there were quite a few submarines, particularly German and British. The Type UC-1 and Type UC-2 U-boats built between 1915 and 1918 are the most successful submarines in military terms in in terms of losses that they inflict on the enemy ever, by far. It's quite incredible. It's quite an interesting little submarine. This is the UC-1, um, which was the first batch, if you like. And you can see that it is, is a mine-laying submarine. There's there's mines that are dropped in the in the top and they fall out the bottom when it's laying them on, uh, on the seafloor. Mines were incredibly effective in World War One, and accounted for 1,800 enemy vessels. 1,800. Think about that. Put that in the context of the Red Sea or the Black Sea today. 1,800 ships were sunk by these types of submarine. And there was only 64 um, of the UC-2s built. There are two designs, UC-1 and UC-2, very similar. Um, the UC-2 is an improved version. That's what you've got here. Coming on to the third type. In World War II, the most advanced, uh, most futuristic, if you like, submarine undoubtedly was the Type 21 boat um, built in Germany. That does get a lot of attention. Here's my cutaway of it. Double hull, like the Le Beauf. Really interesting submarine, but it overshadows one which I think is very underrated. And that is the Type 23 U-boat. These were built between 1944 and 1945. It is a much smaller submarine than the Type 21, much more basic. And you could say um, 
at a face value less impressive, but there's a huge difference. It sunk five vessels, but just six submarines operational, and only in the end of the war, and each submarine only carried two torpedoes. So they're incredibly effective. The Type 21 didn't sink any enemy ships. So the Type 23, this smaller submarine, deserves a lot more attention. And it's also more significant in history of submarines than people realize. The Type 21 influenced um, American and, and British and particularly Russian submarine design in post-war years. But the Type 23 went on to influence German submarine design, much more so than the Type 21. Some were put in service. It then led to Type 202, which is essentially just a slight modification, mod modernization. And you can draw a straight line from this all the way to today's Type 209 submarines. So incredible design legacy as well, but pretty much forgotten. Getting a little bit more modern, during the Cold War, the US Navy's Skipjack class submarine, I think is somewhat underrated. It's not a submarine that isn't known. I think everyone who has a, a decent knowledge of US Navy submarine history is aware of it, but it's hardly talked about. It's not, there's not much focus on it. And that's despite the fact it entered service um, in some numbers. It was also the first submarine that combined nuclear propulsion with the Albacore streamlined hull. And in fact, you can pretty safely say that this is the submarine that, as you know, if you ask any kid to draw what a submarine looks like, it's this submarine it's based on. Six of them were built and entered service. Very clean lines. Um, yeah. It is the prototypical submarine, and yet it's hardly remembered. I think there's a few reasons for that. Firstly, while six did enter service, they were almost immediately superseded by ever more impressive submarines. Um, so for that reason, I think they get forgotten a bit. But at the moment that they were built, they were incredibly significant. Quite interesting submarines. And then finally, coming up today, there's a few submarines I could choose that are relatively recent that I think are underrated or certainly des deserve better recognition. But the one that I want to talk about a little bit is the Collins class. This is the main type or the only type of submarine in service with the Royal Australian Navy at the moment. Um, it is a Swedish design, but Australian built submarine. And it's been in for some really bad press over the years, especially in the early days of its service. There were a lot of teething problems, some of them manufacturing, some of them were design. A big part of it was that the weapons control system and the weapons themselves were US origin and they were mated with a Swedish submarine and the actual software and so on didn't perform anywhere near. Um, expectations it was later upgraded and replaced and and they're now very effective submarines i think the australian media is the australian military is the navy's worst enemy to be honest um there's a lot they're very happy to write um and bad news about any submarine or any defense policy and say it's a waste of money and stuff like this these submarines are nowhere near as bad as their reputation especially in australia itself so very effective submarines now um, and a really interesting design and deserves much more credit than they're currently getting. I think the latest news is that they're suffering from corrosion. corrosion. Um, yeah, that happens. And I don't think that that is a reason to write them off either. Interesting design, very capable. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as I said, unscripted, unedited, that's really obvious. I hope to do more videos. Um, in, in the near future, but things are pretty hard finding the time and the topics. Thank you. Bye.